So Trayvon Walker was the first pick. Now, was this a big mistake by the Jaguars? Now, I think this was, and I'll be honest, had it not been for the Jaguars selecting Devin Lloyd later in the draft, I would think this day would was an absolute travesty for them. Trayvon Walker is not a first overall pick. I understand that the physical upside is there, and Trent Baalke, like he thinks Trayvon reminds him of Alden Smith. Alden Smith had 11 and a half sacks as a freshman in college. Like Alden, Alden Smith was proven. Like he had a track record. Trayvon wasn't even recruited as an edge rusher. He was recruited as a defensive tackle, 26 recruit in the 2019 class. He went to Georgia to play defensive tackle, but they were players in front of his position. So he transitioned to edge freshman season, nose tackle positional change in 2020. He moved to the outside. He had one sack and two tackles for loss. And in this past season, his first full season as a starter, he had he had five, um, six sacks and seven and a half tackles for loss. Now, most of the time, he was when he played on the edge, he wasn't lined up outside the tackle. He was lined up in front of the tackle, which damaged his production. But this is his production in college is one of the least productive edge rushers since 2008, selected in the top five. And those players were Deion Jordan, like Ziggy Ansah, Tyson Jackson. All these guys who had great combines as well. Yeah, Tyson Jackson, third pick by the Jags in 2009. We, we know the Jags aren't a great drafting team. Tyson Jackson bust. Deion Jordan bust. Ziggy Ansah, until his injury, was a productive player. But that's the high end that you're getting with Trayvon Walker. And this is one of the more unprudent first overall picks that we've ever seen. And... If you're drafting a player with the first overall pick, this is the he's first overall pick means the best player in the draft. The player should be proven. It shouldn't be an unproven player. Snaps outside the tackles. Trayvon Walker at 529. Uh, 49% of his pressures were unblocked or clean up. 10%. He had a 10% pass rush win rate uh, with stunts and blitzes removed. I just don't know how you can justify him being number one overall. It's just, I think, to me, a Trent Baalke loving this guy, loving his upside and potential, and now getting him. I would have loved the Hutchinson and Josh Allen duo, but it turns out we're going to get Trayvon Walker and Josh Allen. And Trayvon Walker is a good run defender, but, I mean, you're telling me you're drafting a defensive tackle at number one who, I mean probably isn't even the best defensive tackle in the draft at that position. Like Jordan Davis is well, yeah, he's not a better play prospect. Tackle. He's not going to play. He's yeah. 260. So that's why for me, I just, I think this was a bad pick. And had it not been for Devin Lloyd, I think the, the Jaguars lost this day. But Devin Lloyd is somebody who slipped to them. Um, two-time Dick mm. Butkus <clears throat> award winner, Pac-12 defensive player of the year. He actually could have went to the draft last year. He stayed because he wanted to lead Utah to their first Pac-12 championship in honor of two of his teammates who were killed by gun violence. He led them to the Pac-12 title. He won. He had a pick six in that game, and he's just a freak athlete. And now that Miles Jack is gone, he's going to definitely be a starter there. You could pencil him in there. So that's why I was very high on the Devin Lloyd pick. Very good in coverage, 53.9 passer rating allowed and 340 uh, coverage snaps. So he was... He was more worthy of the first overall pick than, oh than Trayvon Walker, <laughs> oh, if man. I'm being honest. He could rush the passer, too, but I don't know if I'm going that like, far. Tra Trayvon Walker, I just thought this was a horrible pick. This was a Jaguars pick. and the, Horrible? You, all right, you're getting this very was a exaggerated. Pick. No, to this say, was this, a to say Devin pick. Lloyd's more deserving is crazy. Devin Lloyd is more deserving of no, that No, because if Walker pick. hits as an edge rusher, he's going to be a really, really good edge rusher. If you hit on a middle linebacker, it's not as they were you know, drafting off potential and ceiling, and, and that where listen, I think we're all going to agree we wouldn't have gone Trayvon Walker. I think we all would have went Aiden Hutchinson, and this is going to be one of the few times where all three of us do agree on something. However, I'm not going to go as far to say like it was terrible, god awful. It was. That's it depends. Uh, listen, me personally, I'm not trying to, especially a team that has the number one overall pick, aka you need the most help. Clearly, you can't take a chance. You can't gamble. This was a gamble. Taking Trayvon Walker is a gamble because you're banking on him developing into this 
physical freak. Well, he's already a physical freak, but statistically using these physical attributes to lead to being a statistic dominant type player. And, and that, when you're the, the the Jacksonville Jaguars, is a gamble that you can't afford to really take right now. You have Trevor Lawrence. You want to put him on a team that is ready to go immediately. You want to utilize this rookie contract of Trevor Lawrence while you can. Once this time's up, then you're going to have to probably trade, uh, pay Trevor Lawrence. Then then that's when the team really starts to to have its tolls taken and, and you really can't afford to 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 spend money elsewhere to to benefit Trevor Lawrence as much. So you needed to to do whatever you can to benefit to to maximize this time slot that you have. Aiden Hutchinson is the safest pick here. He was the best pass rusher in college last season. And to take a gamble on Trayvon Walker, that's where I have my issue. You said it perfectly. It's a very Jaguars pick. Leading up to the draft, there was reports going out that the GM, owner, and head coach all wanted different guys. And I believe they were down to four players. I'm assuming it was the two edge rushers and the two tackles, Icky and Evan Neal. I would have liked him more if they went Icky instead of Hutchinson or even Evan Neal. As long as you get someone who helps Trevor Lawrence immediately instead of passing up on the best pass rusher for the second best pass rusher. And I understand the upsides there for Walker, right? (laughs) But the reason why Walker got all this hype and really shot into the top five, I mean, he was minus 700 to go top five, which is absolutely ridiculous. Before the combine, he was going to be a first-round pick, but we were talking him more top 10, top 15. But then he goes runs a 4-5, and everyone freaks out and acts like they've never seen an edge rusher before in their life. I understand that Walker, it's it's ridiculous. Hutchinson ran a 4-7. Which is also ridiculous for his size, still in the 90th percentile in terms of people of his, you know, height and weight. But in the most, in the most important drills for edge rusher in the short shuttle, in the three cone, Hutchinson put up better numbers. So the drills that actually matter the most for edge rushers, Hutchinson was more impressive in. And Walker, while he did, he had him be in the broad jump, in the vertical, in the 40, obviously. I, I get all of that. But then you have to take into account the production. Hutchinson, just in his final season, had 14 sacks, 10 tackles for loss. Walker, in his career at Georgia, had 11 sacks, 9 tackles for loss. So we're just talking about one season. Hutchinson cleared him by himself. Like, I understand that Walker had a lot more talent around him. They had five guys going the first round on that Georgia defense, and a few of them were on the defensive line as well. But you have to take into account the production that Hutchinson was going to be able to bring with you, and as, as well as the floor, because you want a guy, number one, you want the upside, but you also want the floor. And I don't see Walker and Hutchinson ceiling as that far apart. I think both of these guys, if they hit, could be really good edge rushers. But Hutchinson has just proven it year in and year out ever since he, he really stepped into Michigan. He put up great combine numbers for everything that I saw. He was great in, in interviews. I mean, Walker was as well. I don't think that's an issue or anything. Um, but in terms of the combine, which really set them apart, I don't get it because the most important drills Hutchinson was more impressive in. So the one area I think that the Jaguars looked at um, and maybe – you know, made it sealed it for them was the arm length because that's one area where Hutchinson that's is true. really, you know, I think he's in like the 30th percentile. He has 32 inch arms. Walker has 35 and a half inch arms, which are really long for his size. And the reason why it's so important is for edge rushers and for offensive linemen blocking them, whoever gets their arms or hands on the defender or offensive tackle first is going to probably win that rep, right? If you're able to get as an edge rusher into the offensive lineman's chest first, you have a better chance of going around him. Same thing. If the offensive tackle is able to get on the edge first, you have a better chance of containing him. So that might be one area where the Jaguars um, looked at and said, you know what, let's get the guy with the longer arms because he has a better chance of winning each individual rep, even though Hutchinson showed time and time again in Michigan, it didn't matter. You're right. And you said it perfectly. I'm going to stand by what I said. Trayvon Walker is not even a top four (laughs) pass rusher in this draft or edge rusher. Kayvon Hutchinson, Jermaine Johnson at 26. You weren't even that high on him at 10. So I don't want to hear this. No, at four, I wasn't. Well, four, obviously. But, no, we spoke about 10. You were like, I don't want it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't have taken Trayvon Walker at 10. Uh-huh. But Bro, what you're I'm, crazy. No, I'm not crazy. You're crazy. What I'm, saying, what I'm saying is that to not even take the best player at the I'm position, a top three player at the position with the first overall pick is just ridiculous. I would have taken Kayvon over Trayvon, personally. I like Kayvon more, too. And <laughs> look at just moves the Jaguars have made. Like, yeah, they have gotten Trevor Lawrence help, but... Help is correct. Yeah, That's so well they, said. They've, got, they've gotten him help. You know, Christian Kirk is help. Uh, when you, They probably could have traded for, like, Hollywood on draft night and, you know, had a better receiver. Oh, my God. That would have been cool. They got Not Trevor cool Lawrence. They got Trevor Lawrence help with, you know, these big-time free agent signings that 
They overspent for Brandon Scherf hasn't been able to stay healthy. You had, uh, I think, Brandon Linder retired. So Brandon Linder retiring should be all more of the reason to go with an offensive tackle or icky because uh, he can play guard and tackle with that first overall pick. I just don't know what the Jaguars are doing. And I, I know, I know, I know. Do we ever know? I, I know people are going to be like, oh, you just watch the Jaguars. Come on. Let's let's now I feel them because I feel the real. same way whenever I listen to whatever media or it's on real. YouTube talk about the Jets saying the same old Jets. I understand the Jaguars are going to feel the same way. We're there's talking about. there's the a Jaguars. difference, though. There's, there's a difference. There's a shift now. In, in, there's in there's a shift. Did you see I quoted? Uh, I quoted the tweet of all the three first round picks with Jalen Brown's the energy is about to shift. Uh, uh, the energy is uh, about to shift is, in New York. It is. It is. And I, I feel it. He's good, man. I don't think yeah. anybody feels the energy shifting in Jacksonville. The only thing people feel is that Trevor Lawrence is going to live up to the hype that he had coming out of college. And if he does that, then he can raise the Jaguars floor because he'll mask a lot of their deficiencies. But Trevor Lawrence had a horrible rookie season. Not great. If When you talk about the rookie quarterback, I mean, Davis Mills had a better season. Zach Wilson had a better season. Trey Lance. Barely. Trey yeah. Lance. Down the stretch. Yeah. Trey Lance in his Trevor limited didn't have play. A stretch he like didn't Zach. have a stretch. You're right. Trey Lance in his limited play. Mac Jones. Okay, reach. Mac Jones, yes. Four four quarterbacks had a better season than, than Trevor Lawrence. And when we talk about situation. Justin Fields, no. He did not. This guy is so narrative-based. It's insane. Da- Davis Mills was in equally awful situation as Trevor Lawrence. When you talk about offensive line, I'm weapons, running I'm game, and he was better. Uh, Brandon Cooks is better than everyone on the Jaguars, yeah. but 100% right. I understand what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I understand what you're saying, but the Texans also have an awful offensive line. Awful, yeah. awful. They also have Urban Meyer, True. which helps. True. Y'all, David Culley so much better. They're, David Culley's not good, too, but Urban Meyer was an absolute disaster. It doesn't get worse than him. And Mills had some good coaches around him. Yeah, he had your boy. Yeah, Pep Hamilton. Yeah. I love that. I love that for him. I'm not saying I don't, but Trevor Lawrence... He, he gets, like, it, it's just weird to me because... He shouldn't have a pass because Trevor Lawrence comes in. He's the high, highest-touted prospect of all time. You need to come in. You need to show that you it's, are it's weird. who everyone thinks that you are. It's weird because Trevor Lawrence has gotten all these excuses for not being good as rookie season, and he's just a rookie. I understand it. But people mostly made those excuses because everybody penciled him in as a surefire prospect. Oh, yeah, for sure. And everybody said, there is no chance he fails. Year one, he fails, and everybody's like, oh, no, but... Look, 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 look at this. Look at this. Look at all this. Look at all this stuff, though. He has here, too. Colts went 2-14, and, and Andrew Luck came in and was great right away. If he, you th- notice. This was supposed to be this generation's Andrew Luck. If you notice. You know what I mean, generation. This is what this I've noticed. Period. Before the 2021 draft, the quarterbacks everybody liked were Lawrence, Fields, Lance. That's who everybody liked. The ones that got heavily criticized were Zach Wilson and Mac Jones. Zach Wilson didn't have a did good rookie. Did he get rookie. criticized? Zach yes. definitely no, did. At the yeah. draft? Of draft? Yeah. yeah. Really? Sure. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he got it. Yeah. I don't know, man. After his pro day, I feel like everyone was on the same page. No, no, no. This guy yeah, said after everyone said, oh, are you going to draft him based on one throw in the pro day? Like, it he wasn't, wasn't just phenomenal at yeah, BYU. Exactly. And not only that, but they also had clips of him looking, having, he, he looked as if he had anxiety at the draft. And they made a lot of jokes about him. He went viral on draft night because of those stuff. I didn't see that. Yeah. It, he it also was, was only dominant one year at BYU, too. It yeah. wasn't like Fields who did multiple And seasons. then Mac Jones, everybody's like, oh, look, Alabama, uh, not mobile, all this other stuff. And those were the two ones that were most hated on. Zach Wilson, I understand, is a wait and see. But Mac Jones already showed year one he's going to be yeah. at least a good quarterback. Yeah, for sure. But people are still finding excuses to say, oh, no, but Mac Jones, this is, this is a ceiling, though. This is a ceiling. You know, they're still finding ways to criticize Mac Jones. I don't hate that. I don't. I hate that because it's not his ceiling. The only reason why statistically, not. statistically, it's not his ceiling. The but reason, I understand yes, like play, yes, like how yes, he yes, played. Correct. Yeah. Correct. I know what you're saying, but th- that they've made excuses for Fields. They've made excuses for Lawrence. Fields deserves excuses. Lawrence, not so oh, much. So Lawrence, deser- Lawrence doesn't, but Fields does. I mean, come on, the Bears. You can say that that is a worse situation than the Jaguars. No. At least Trevor Lawrence has a no, decent no. offensive line. No. Decent. This guy, uh, excuse it's, me. It's hard for me to, I Fields have to give Trevor a pass, no, though. I'm giving him a pass. Urban Listen, Meyer I'm giving, Urban I'm Meyer. giving Trevor Lawrence Coach a pass. Coach is the most pass, important thing. But I'm just saying, Fields gets a pass. Yeah. He 100% Well, no, everyone it. gets, I once, think by every, the end of the second year, we'll know. Every rookie quarterback 
gets a pass. I'm not trying to bash Trevor Lawrence. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying is that there's a inherent there's an implicit bias. It's 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 clear that everybody there's a consensus belief that Lawrence gets a pass when they don't want to give these other quarterbacks a pass. Even Mac Jones, who was I mean runner up for rookie of the year, yeah. is is getting more criticized than Trevor Lawrence, and for what reason? It makes no sense. Had Mac Jones went to Jacksonville, he wouldn't have looked that bad. I promise you, he wouldn't. People want to confirm their their biases or whatever yeah. they thought before without the draft. A doubt. So without a doubt. It.